working as an assistant professor in chemistry near institute of engineering and technology in this video we are going to see about the estimation of amount of ferrous ion present in the solution using potentiometer so first we need to see what's the principle in this uh, experiment so potentiometer estimation which is a quantitative analysis so we can find out the amount of ion present in the solution that's why this is quantitative analysis so we are measuring the potential difference created in between the two electrodes so we are using electrodes for measuring the emf of the solution so what's the reaction taking place in this experiment is we are using standard potassium dichromate and in acidic medium so we are taking sulfuric acid which reacts with ferrous ammonium sulfate so which produces potassium sulfate then chromium sulfate then ion which is fe2 plus is reduced to fe3 plus then water is produced here so this is the reaction happening happens during the process so which is a redox reaction so the fe2 plus is decreases into fe3 plus so what is the end point is fe2 plus is fully converted into fe3 plus ions next we will move to the experiment so this is the apparatus we are using to estimate the amount of ferrous ion so this is potentiometer then the ferrous ion solution which we are going to estimate the amount then we are uh, using acidic medium so we are taking sulfuric acid then standard solution potassium dichromate so first we need to fill the burette with standard potassium dichromate then we need to take 20 ml of ferrous ammonium sulfate in the beaker then 10 ml of sulfuric acid then a little amount of water so what's the purpose of adding water is to dip the electrodes we are using two electrodes here first one is calomel electrode which is a reference electrode then next is platinum which is an indicator electrode so here we are measuring the potential difference created in between the two electrodes by the addition of the reagent that is potassium dichromate so in this beaker we are taking 20 ml FAA solution, 10 ml sulfuric acid and a little amount of water. So first we need to add 1 ml from the burette then we are measuring the EMF. In this meter we are measuring the EMF in millivolts. So already I have taken these three solutions. So our first reading is 448 millivolts. Then we are adding 1 ml from the burette. So for each 1 1 ml we are taking the EMF of the solution. So by adding this a potential difference is created. So slowly the Fe2 plus is converted into Fe3 plus. Here the reduction oxidation that is redox reaction taking place. So by adding 1 ml we need to stir the solution thoroughly then only we will get the correct value. So the second value was 458 millivolts that is the EMF is increasing because Fe2 plus is converted into Fe3 plus reduction oxidation reaction taking place. Likewise we need to take 20 to 25 readings that is up to the end point. So what's the end point is sudden removal of Fe2 plus and all the ions is converted into Fe3 plus. Next we will move to the calculation part. Next we will see the tabulation part. So this is the table we are using to enter the values. So first it is serial number, then volume of K2CO7, which is buried solution, which is measured in ml, then EMF, which is in volts. So in meter we are uh, measuring the readings uh, EMF in millivolts. So while writing, here we need to write it like this. We are converting that millivolts into volt and we are entering the values here. Then next is delta E. It's nothing but the difference between the EMF. Second EMF minus first EMF. Then next is delta V, which is the difference between the volume. Second volume minus first volume. Then finally, we are taking del E by del V for plotting the graph. So by using the graph only, we can find out the end point. So first we know that initial is 0, then uh, we see the value was 0 0.448, 448 millivolt is there, so while converting it uh, into volts it is 0 0.448, so we are entering the value here, then for one number we are adding from the burette, so we got the value 0 0.456, then
the next few ml we have got 0.468 so uh, till get the end point we are adding the ml from the buret 11 ml we are adding so what is the end point is we are getting sudden increase uh, around 0.2 or 0.3 millivolts we are we, we get increase so at that time we know that it is the end point so all the fe2 plus ions is converted into fe3 plus ion so here the redox reaction taking place next we will move to the calculation part mm. next we will see the uh, how to draw the graph so we need to draw the two graphs so by using the graph only we can know the accurate end point so this is the first graph that is called rough graph so here we are taking volume of K, uh, potassium dichromate in x axis and emf emf values in y axis so uh, based on the value we can change the we can select the scale like 1 cm 2 cm or 0.5 so uh, by drawing this graph by put the values we can get a graph like this so the, this is a sudden increase so this is the end point then next we are uh, drawing the far graph so using this graph only we can find say the exact end point using this first graph we can say the rough, uh, rough end point then using this second graph we can say the accurate end point so here we are taking x axis volume of k2cr2o7 and in y axis we are taking the del e by del v which is we already seen in the table form so by dra drawing these two x and y axis we are getting a graph like this here we are getting a peak value so this highest peak value is the the corresponding volume is the um, uh, volume of ferrous ion in the solution so this is the calculation part so volume of k2cr2o7 which is uh, we already taken in the buret that is 20 ml then normality which is a standard solution so here we are taking the normality that is 0.1 n the normality of potassium dichromate is 0.1 n then next is volume of ferrous ion solution which we have find out from the graph so that we will enter here so finally we need to know the normality of ferrous ion solution so by plotting these three so b1 into n1 divided by b2 so we can find out the n2 value so by substituting this n2 value here that is the normality of ferrous ion solution we can find out the amount of ferrous ion because in this experiment we are going to find out the amount so we need to substitute the normality of ferrous ion into its equivalent weight so ferrous ion's equivalent weight is 55.85 so by substitute the normality value here we can find out the amount of ferrous ion in the given solution so this is a method we are using to find out the amount of ferrous ion present in the solution using potentiometer experiment thank you